How about we talk some defensive backs, Caleb? What do you think of that? Let's do it. Let's roll. All right. Let's start with nobody's coming back, basically. And seven guys gone. And Willie Martinez, though, said they'll be much more. He's Tennessee's defensive backs coach, much more athletic. So even though this team lacks experience, can Tennessee fans expect it to be better in the secondary? Well, if you listen to Willie Martinez's press conference, he seemed very optimistic. Caleb, thoughts? I think they should be a lot better. Um, I think that the the their biggest losses are at safety. I, I think they will miss Wesley Walker and Jalen McCullough to a, to a degree. Um, but you you should expect Jordan Thomas and Christian Harrison to develop. And then there's also uh, Boo Carter, who will probably step in at safety, who is a superstar, I think, in the making. Um, the other the other safety right now favorite would be Andre Turrentine, who is a total bust in the making, but still. I think you can live with that with Boo Carter on you don't one side. Like him at all. Now, I, don't now here's, here, I wanted to break the, these guys down individually. Turrentine mentioned that he really struggled when he transferred to Tennessee. So being that open and honest about it makes me think it's true. So I got Turrentine based off of his media session a notch higher than maybe you do and a notch higher than I did before that. Just because if you realize your mistakes and you realize you were lost, you can fix it. If you fail to realize it, then you're just insanity. You're repeating the same mistake over. So I like him a little bit more than maybe you do. As far as uh, some other players that you mentioned, Boo Carter, uh, and I want us to predict uh, who the starting four or five would be, however you want to look at it with uh, the Nickelback. But uh, other than Boo Carter, uh, there's Jermaud McCoy. Uh, he's, according to Martinez, different than the other two transfers or really anybody. He's raw, raw, okay? He has uh, not played much defense. He didn't play defense in high school. So he may be good, but I wouldn't expect it to be this year. Jalen McMurray um, has been the most consistent player according to uh, Martinez. So, I mean, I would think that's a good sign. The star that I think is in the making other than uh, Boo Carter would be Ricky Gibson III, who started against Iowa. Uh, and now he is a guy that um, huh, is, is looked upon as your starter at corner, whereas you kind of went into the last two spring practices, not really sure who your starting cornerback was. It's a great sign that Tennessee knows one of those guys. We'll see, see who the second is. But right now, I think that you've got a, a young guy in Ricky Gibson that has has clearly made his impact on, on the practice field and has impressed the coaches to the point where I would, I would think he would be the starter if the season started on Saturday. Yeah, I think Ricky Gibson would be a starting cornerback. And I think the other one will be either Jalen McMurray or Jermon McCoy, one of those two transfers. I'm still waiting on Jordan Matthews to emerge. I, I may have missed on him, but I just feel like I can't imagine that he would be that big of a miss. But you'll find three guys in the rotation of those four players. But Ricky Gibson's the star, and then Jalen McMurray slash Jermon McCoy is going to be the reliable guy on the other side. And one of them will play nickel too. And I think Jordan Matthews may be just another year out from really emerging. Is there, any, is there any player that even comes close to the level of excitement of a boot Carter, which is a true freshman? No, the other pickups were filling voids, but they fill voids better than last year because we just mentioned McMurray and McCoy there's also Jacoby Thomas at safety, who I I, I miss because we just brought up Andre Turrentine, but I think Jacoby Thomas is going to be the other starter at safety. That I do too, oh, as a matter of fact. I know I was gonna, I was going to get back to safety, so I I think it'll be. Ah, I hate to say a freshman is going to start. I think it'll be uh, Carter at the strong safety position, and then at free safety. Oh, you just said his name. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, Jacoby Thomas. Jacoby Thomas, I think, will play there. He played at uh, MTSU. I think they like him a lot. And I found it interesting, too, that they're looking for players who have gotten some development in college, but that realize they can take another step. 
So we talked about how Tennessee had this incredible advantage of NIL, and they did and they do, and that's not going away anytime soon. However, they may have an advantage in that their coaches are a little bit forward thinking here because the high school prospects aren't going to be the people you pay anymore. And I think it's no more evident than in Tennessee's defensive backfield. The guys that you're going to pay are going to be the guys that are proven it, the transfers and the guys that you pay to keep. So Tennessee didn't feel like they needed to pay to keep anybody. So that tells you what they thought of the last group. And they paid for a lot of these guys. So that in and of itself tells me that the Tennessee understands NIL at a high level. I don't know if Billy Napier is still trying to pay Jaden Rashada $5 million or not, but that's not going to be the direction it goes. The days of uh, Nico Iamaleava making $2 million a year, Caleb, that's not going to be the norm. No, that's not going to be the norm anymore either. And as a matter of fact, I have to, I can't, I'm going to do this. You guys are going to call me crazy, but I'm actually going to give a shout out to an article I read by Skip Bayless of all people 10 years ago. Wow. Who wrote an article I, thought you were going to, I thought you were going to give a shout out to an article that you wrote. I thought that's what you were about to say. I was like, oh, that's not, it's not pretentious uh, at all. I would, I've like, enough vi- I would like myself to introduce myself and my column. Go ahead. I have given myself enough credit for being proven right on quite a few things this month. So uh, I think I'll, t- I think I I'll actually humbly, uh... wrote something, by the way, on our, uh, on our hookers corner, Patreon page about what an incredible run you've had. So uh, that is up there. So if you want to ask Caleb questions, all you got to do is uh, go to hookers corner, go ahead and finish your point. <laughs> so uh, reading about skip, Bailey, this was before opening the opening the market to just pay players. He said that, Don't worry about the competitive imbalance of opening the checkbook to pay players. Because what he said was boosters would learn very fast that you can't throw that much money at football recruits because the ratings and football recruits are too unpredictable. It's too risky of an investment. And I actually think he's been proven right on that. Now, what he didn't take into account, what none of us took into account was the transfer portal where you could throw money at proven football players. But in terms of recruits, Dave, I do think that... And I don't know if you agree with me. I just think, I, I don't think it's like basketball, right? In football, a five-star is too risky of an investment for a, for a NIL collective. Because you just don't know what you're going to get from that player. Most of the time. They're, they're too unpredictable a lot of times. No. And what if you, if, if you don't do well in him, there's, there's three or four other guys that you could have had. I mean, I think the going rate for a starter is going to be six, seven hundred thousand dollars somewhere in there, maybe pushing a million. But when you start paying superstar athletes, you have to look at this like the the NFL and the salary cap. If you're going to spend two million dollars on an eco, could that have gotten you four high quality defensive backs? I mean, I think we all love Nico, and I think he's going to be fantastic. But the argument for four quality players over one superstar could be made. I wouldn't make it, but it could be made, Caleb. Yeah, and you're certainly not going to spend that in the NFL on a rookie. You know, only uh, Al Davis was stupid enough to do that with Jamarcus Russell. But most of the time, you before the rookie scale was even a thing, you didn't spend that type of money on rookies because you knew it was too risky of an investment. So I agree. I think that, and that was the focus on Tennessee this year was they have a model that works and it actually started with Michigan. That's how Michigan won the national title this past year. They actually focused. They said they, Michigan wasn't the most talented team. If you guys watched that Michigan, Alabama game, Alabama had more talent. Michigan was just more disciplined. The focus on Michigan from 2022 going into 2023 was let's divert all of our NIL funds to keeping players who would otherwise leave for the NFL. They were the most experienced team with talent, the best combination of experience and talent by far in college football. And that's how they want it all. And I think Tennessee is replicating that model now. Hey, can I, can I toot my own horn for a second? Sure. Go. Okay. I told you all this would work out the NIL money. It was not sustainable to pay a quarterback $2 million a year and promising that for three years. I think Tennessee got lucky and got the right one or was skilled and, used good judgment to get the right one. This is all working itself out. It could use a little more structure, but the NIL money should go to guys like uh, Cooper Mays. It should go to guys who are already getting it done, have proven they have gotten it done. It shouldn't go to guys who have not proven it yet. 
And that's just a fact.